All right, now the other thing I want to show you is you have your manual hen house door. And what this does is just close off just like that. You have a little shepherd's hook that's spring loaded right there. Now the one thing I wanted to mention for the record is actually this is not needed for predator protection. The entire run protects this opening. Now the one thing that is nice about having this door is if, especially in more colder climates, if you wanted to be able to close that off, block any more wind that could possibly be coming through, that is a nice way of doing it. Just remember to uh, open that up so your girls can come And that out. was the reason I got it for, was more for that than anything else, was for the wind in the winter. Yeah, so you'll be able to close that off and then come down here. Now, the one nice thing, too, that you'll be able to do quickly is when you go to acclimate your chickens to this coop, one thing I was thinking about is it would be a good idea. Go ahead and close this off for a little bit. Make sure they learn that's home. Make sure, especially at night, their instinct should tell them go up on the roost bars. And then maybe do that for a couple days as long as they're not getting stressed out. And then just open this up and then let them come down on their own. And then after that, you know, it's going to be up to your personal preference whether or not you want to close that. And then there's a little eye bolt right there to keep that open so it doesn't close on them. Okay? Um, any questions about the inside of the run? No, I don't have any. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been all pretty self-explanatory. Nice. Well, one thing you were asking me the other day is what should I put inside the run? And we get that question a lot. And my answer to that is think about what would chickens have if they're coops were not invented you know and chickens are a natural woodland animal and I always say the forest floor you know you don't want concrete you don't want gravel you could use sand it's not one of my personal favorites I love just natural earth a good place for the microbes to do their job and the chickens will absolutely love to scratch in here but since you're letting them free range which is beautiful um, they can get out, do their exercising, get their work done, act as chickens. And then if there is ever a time, for whatever reason, you got to keep them inside the run, they'll still be happy. Um, let's say, you know, sometimes if you have ornamental people come out with herbicides or you, know, you got a party going on, you still have a beautiful, nice big run that the chickens will be very happy with. So speaking of the inside of the run, actually we'll hop on the outside, but here is the inside of your manual chicken door. And the one thing I was telling you before is if you ever want to change this out and go to an automatic, this is all ready for that. Really super easy to put that in, okay? You two chicken police, just for you. Here we go. There's your predator apron before I forget. Um, so Sean does an amazing job. He went around the outside. And also they put in this pressure treated base, which is really nice, which I definitely should point out. I forgot all about that. But, um, you know, a question we get also a lot is what do I need to do to prepare for my chicken coop? And that is you definitely want a flat level surface. Now, what that flat level surface may be is completely up to you. We've done concrete, we've done concrete curbs, pressure treated base, people brought in soil. The, the main thing is flat and level. And in this particular situation, now you got a situation that is something to be aware of. And that is we're at the bottom of this property. So all your water's coming down. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure you keep an eye on this. When it rains, we don't want water going inside the run. And so actually having this pressure treated base is actually gonna help slow that down. And adding some gutters is gonna help out as well. The main idea is you want that water to come and go. We don't ever want it to sit, or that can definitely turn into more problems. Now, the entire bottom of your coop is all pressure treated, but what's nice is since this is your ground contact, that actually kind of acts as a, if you will, a sacrificial board for the bottom of your run. If something was to happen to the pressure treated, which is known to happen, um, you're not supposed to get wood rot from termites or um, wood destroying organisms. If it does happen, it's easier to replace this than it is the coop. All right, so we got the apron going all the way around. That's gonna keep the animals from being able to dig underneath. If you haven't seen how the predator apron works, basically when an animal, like a, like a coyote or a fox, go to dig, they're gonna come all the way to the base of the run wall and try to dig straight down. They will run into the apron. They will not come out here and then dig down. This is the quickest, easiest way to keep animals from digging underneath. And also, this will, believe it or not, this will disappear on its own. Gravity, it, it will do its thing. Uh, you can come back around with a little more, maybe soil, go over top of it, seed it. Yeah. We'll try to seed it, your chickens might eat it. Right, well, I'll, <laughs> I'll attempt to do something. Yeah, and that will, uh, they always end up disappearing, which is really nice. So here's the other side of your manual door, and this will just be an easy way to let your chickens come and go. Uh, you have a gate latch. Now, I definitely recommend putting a carabiner on here, all right, all right to keep raccoons especially getting in just close it right like that you never need to worry about it shutting on you pretty simple pretty simple. easy awesome 
Here's one of my favorite parts about chicken coops, and especially our chicken coops, is the egg hutch. You know, this is where you're going to come get your breakfast. Uh, another gate latch, drop down door. And in here is where you're going to have your nest boxes. And I love using long, stringy nesting material so they can make that natural nest um, that will turn into like a bowl shape. And another thing that we've learned that works out really well that is uh, like aspen mats or there's also a coconut fiber type mat. You could put that down so that it's not making a mess in here. But one thing I want to emphasize, regardless of what you use, when you put that material in there and they start nesting, um, and before it's kind of locked in, you may get debris building up right here. Okay, Your egg hutch door should always shut just like that. If it doesn't, that means you got debris building up right here and you're trying to sandwich it right here. Just clean that out. But again, once it's all established, that doesn't become a problem anymore. How, how much should, uh, should I fill that up with the uh, straw? I fill it up all the way, all the way and then okay. let them kind of do their thing and okay. make it nice and soft for them. Oh, and the other thing too is um, these are all easily removable. Uh, if you're brand new to chickens, you may think right now you need one nest box per chicken. That's not true. Uh, you have how many chickens right now? I've got uh, 15. 15 chickens. So. You, you could uh, contest to this that how many girls you think share one nest box? Oh, you? like there's the one probably will have three or four eggs in one nest box into one house by now. Exactly. So they a lot of times they just use the same one. They yep. just for whatever reason. So one thing you could do is if you have a couple girls fighting over a nest box and it's kind of tight, you can remove this divider. Give them a little more room. There's nothing wrong with that. They're going to be completely happy. The other nice thing is if you ever have a mama hen going broody and you want to have her raise a couple baby chicks, you just made room for her and the baby chicks. You can put a little water and feed her in there. And there's no better way than that to acclimate new hens to your flock. So these are easily removable. Really for that reason. It's completely up to you what you want to do from there. Oh, and the other nice thing about these drop down doors is you'll notice a lot of other egg hutches, they hinge from right here. I, I don't like them, especially in our situation because we want to elevate the hen house so we gain that access to the run underneath. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to get to the egg hutch being elevated when you have a drop down door. But more importantly, uh, we actually just got a great video of this in Orlando. You open this up, you won't startle your hens. You know, say you got a late morning, one's already in there laying, you want breakfast, you don't have to worry about scaring her. If you lift this up, you're going to freak them out. So that's another nice thing about these drop down doors. All right, so here's the back of your hen house and you have two hen house doors and one deep litter door. And then right here you have what our, we call our screen doors, even though they're actually a solid door. And these are technically the screen doors. Going back to, you can never have enough ventilation. Just pop these right off, just like that. See, I didn't even realize that they would come off. I thought enough. they were just stationary there. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Just pop these right off, just like that. Gotcha. And look at that. You just got more windows, more ventilation. You can never, ever have enough cross ventilation. Absolutely love that about our coops. Now, when you want to do gain access into your hen house, you just open up your doors. And now this particular coop, you've upgraded to the high density polyethylene, which I think is awesome. Definitely not necessary, but it's like the best analogy I can come up with is like having heated leather seats in your car. It's not necessary, but they're nice to have, easy to clean. Um, but the biggest part here is look at the size of this hen house. And it's huge. I mean, it's bigger than the other two combined. Exactly. Yeah, you were mentioning that earlier and I was like, oh, we definitely got to get that on video because size does matter when it comes to chicken coops. You can never really have a big enough coop. Um, and the other thing is you have room for you to actually grow with your flock if need be. So, um, you know, a question we get a lot is well, how many chickens can go in that coop? And I always forget. Now, when it comes to a coop, we got two parts. We got the hen house and we got the run. Now, since we're talking about the hen house, I like going by what's called the one foot rule. So in here, the hen house is eight foot wide. We got three roost bars that are eight foot long. Uh, so that's 24 feet, okay? Right. So I would say, easy math, 24 chickens. So you actually have room to grow your flock now with right. plenty of room, especially with a 12 inch rule. Most people will say you can get down to eight inches. I like a king size bed, that's just me. Um, now, what I would love to do is if you're ready, is you got three 44 pound bales of industrial hemp. You wanna put that in there? Sure. Awesome. So what I wanted to capture in this video is how many, you're, you're asking me too, how many bales do I need for this size hen house? And truth be told, I always forget. So here we'll get it on video. So we just drop this down, go ahead and drop that in there. 
So let's see. This hen house is six times eight. How many square feet is that? 40, 48. 48? 48, okay. Camera guy, make sure we get a good shot of this. Now this stuff comes right in from France. This is a very high quality industrial hemp. Notice how clean it is. This stuff, have you ever used industrial hemp at all? No. This is the Never best seen stuff. It this is the best stuff in the world. It's not the marijuana plant. It is in the <laughs> cannabis family, but this is this is just the best stuff in the world. Look how nice and clean it is. Yeah. Next is zero dust. This is the good stuff. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dump this out. So there's 44 pounds right there. Go ahead and bring that other bag in. Put another one open. That did quite a bit. I'm surprised. So you got a big hen house. Right over. Yep. So I would say right now, let's see here, we have an average of about four inches. So you definitely have room for another bale. And I say, let's go ahead and throw that in here. Okay. And actually, before you do that, here, let me take this from you. Thank you. Go on to show one of the best parts about our chicken coop. When it does come time to clean, you know, I definitely recommend uh, doing the uh, deep litter system. And when it does come time to clean, it doesn't get any easier than this. Open up the hen house doors, drop down the deep litter door. The hen house is elevated, so there's no bending over. Bring your wheelbarrow up. And this stuff is just gold. You know, it'd be high in nitrogen, great fertilizer. Pulling, sweeping motion, pull that all out, put it in the wheelbarrow, and you can start over. Or you could be technical. Maybe take the top layer off that already has a bunch of microbes introduced from the chicken droppings. And I believe that's called the crust. You can put that off to the side, pull out the more composted stuff at that point, and then go to another compost, go to your garden, depending on the time of year, um, and then add your crust back into it so you're not starting over from scratch. So what will happen is when your chickens are out scratching on the ground and you know they're feeding on the bugs and whatnot, we're picking up microbes and they'll introduce those microbes into the deep litter system here. And what this hemp does is it's more of a greener material and it just does a great job at composting. Uh, it's very absorbent and it's really just another set and forget a system. That's what people really love about it is there's not a lot of work involved with your hen house anymore. So, and actually, so you can go, let's see, 12, 15, you got 15 chickens? 15. I'd be willing to bet you, if you didn't add any more, at least two years before you wow. ever have to clean this out. Wow. Guarantee it. Uh, if not longer. We got... Uh, <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, we were at just another coop. Um, going on two years, you would never even know. Yeah, it. All no you do is just rotate, stir, stir it up. Yeah, so actually we'll talk about that here. We'll talk a little more about that in detail. So let's go ahead and open up this third bale. This should give us about six inches, which is a good, good number for the depth. All right, so there's three 44-pound bales. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. I love it. You'll so, love this when we get in it. Absolutely. So that's about half full. And, yeah, so as the chickens, you know, 50% of their defecation is going to be when they're sleeping at night on their roost bars here. And what's important to know is in your situation, what you can do is start off with just rotating it. You don't have to add any more for quite some time. And <clears throat> as the microbes are introduced, they'll start doing the composting for you. And when it's time to add more, isn't based on visual. It's based on smell. If you start to get that high nitrogen chicken right. dropping smell, that's when it's gonna be time to add a layer or keep rotating it. And it's really that simple. All right? Did you get a good shot of that camera guy? Um, and let's see, any other questions about your, oh, oh, that's the other thing I wanted to show. Uh, we went back to our sockets. If you want to make it so that it's nice and easy to clean your roost bars, uh, you can just pull them out just like that, clean them, and then pop them back in. Nice and easy. And there is a little chamfer cut, so it's rounded over. I just believe these are the perfect size roost bars for chickens and cover their feet on those cold nights if need be. Uh, just nice and comfy for them. When it does come time to clean, you just drop this deep litter door down. Easy peasy. Easy. A whole yep. lot easier than what I have now. <laughs> Absolutely. 
close that and yeah we put your so what I do I, I, I try to make it look easy I know right where to place my hands just get those pins lined up yeah here I'll show you here's okay, the you do, way to do. Let me see. Let me watch so what I do is I go right to this corner and I use my hand as kind of a spacer so it makes it easy to go up and down and I just start to crash it. Also, you want to go at a 90. I got you. Okay. That's the other little trick. 90, that's the trick. Okay. Just like that. All right, guys. Well, I hope you liked this video, and I hope if you have any questions, please leave them down below. We want to hear from you guys. Questions, comments. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. If you ever want to order a coop, talk about a chicken coop, uh, Ingrid, bring our number up right now, 919-794-3989. You can see us at carolinacoops.com. All kinds of pictures, uh, more videos. <laughs> And, of course, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all that good fun stuff. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching.